Hey everyone and welcome back to Jedi SK. Today we're going to be talking about the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam, what you need to study, what updates did they make to it, and lastly, tips and tricks to make you faster and pass your exam with ease. So as usual, we can jump into today's readme. As always, these are located at github.com slash Jedi as code. Uh, the specific one is slash wiki. It used to be called resources, but I changed it because I like the name wiki better. Just to give a little bit of background, I took the, uh, the June 2022 updated version of the CKA. They changed it to be completely in a remote desktop. Previously wasn't this way, but hopefully some of the tips that I'll share about the exam environment will help you when you take yours. It took about one month of general study time, three days of exam prep. The total exam was 120 minutes, but they actually give you 122 minutes when you get to the exam, but don't count it, prepare for 120 minutes. And then I feel like I moved pretty quickly after my first pass through, through all the questions. I think I skipped one. I had about 50 minutes left and I skipped it because I knew it would take a long time, not because I didn't know it. But I passed with a score of 91%. You only need 66% to pass, so I can definitely help you get there. So in today's guide, we're going to be talking about how to study, what materials you should go over, depending on where your level is at with Kubernetes. Next, we're going to be talking about the testing environment. Again, it is now on a remote desktop, so I'll give some details about that. And lastly, a finesse guide. This is probably going to be my favorite part. I'm just going to be sharing a bunch of tips, tricks, aliases, functions, uh, stuff like that to make you really fast on the exam. because. Again, it's a timed exam, open note, so you can have all the docs, but it's really up to you to really know where to look and what commands you need to uh, kind of have down to a T so you can pass with enough time. All right, first things first, you got to get your material down to a T. You got to know Kubernetes, not like the back of your hand, but pretty well. So there are a couple ways of doing this. I prefer to just take one of those guided courses provided on the internet. I took the, uh, the A Cloud Guru CKA course right here. Before I made this guide, I did a little bit of research and it seems like everyone on the internet uh, really recommends Code Cloud CK certification course. Again, links to everything here on the uh, the README. But if you don't have a Cloud Guru for free like I do, I recommend that you take the uh, the Code Cloud course instead. If you already know Kubernetes like the back of your hand, again, you don't need to take one of these courses. But the next couple steps I do recommend regardless of your skill level. The first thing that'll help you a lot on the exam is the killer.sh exam simulator. Now, regardless of your Kubernetes skill level, I highly recommend that you go through the killer.sh exam simulator. It aims to be very similar to the CKA exam itself. It's pretty similar, but with the new virtual environment, it's a little bit different, but they give you more questions. They give you harder questions all within the same time limit as the actual CKA. So if you can do this guy um, and pass with a really good score, you'll have no problem on the CKA. One thing I will say though, is um, they give you two free runs with the purchase of your CKA exam. So not that free but you should definitely run through this exam simulator at least once and then review. After you're done with your run, they give you an explanation that goes question by question on how to solve each one of the practice questions on the killer.sh simulator. I recommend that you read every single explanation regardless of how comfortable you are on the question because you'll pick up new ways of doing things, of understanding things, or it might just be good review. After you've done your killer.sh run, the people that make killer.sh also makes killer coda. And killer coda has a lot of examples CK scenarios. Currently there are 12 of them. Just do all of them at least once. This will really just fill out any gaps that the exam simulator or your studies might have missed. So complete these questions as well. Next up, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the testing environment. Again, this was updated in June 2022 to be in a completely remote desktop environment. There is a mock-up on the screen right now, not a screenshot actually taken from the exam, but I got it from this blog post. You can check out that link down there. They have some advice on the exam as well. So at a high level, the design is pretty straightforward. On the top, you have the PSI browser things that you know, are related to the proctoring of your environment. Left side, you have the questions and on the right side, you have your remote desktop. So now I'll just go into some tips. So check and process. This is a PSI exam. Check and process can be kind of a pain. Uh, make sure you have your ID and you can do a camera scan of your entire room. Make sure it's clean. Uh, they get really picky about just having random things on your desk. So be prepared for that. Previously, you could have two monitors plugged in, but right now they only allow you to have one. So prepare accordingly. So the check-in process can be a little stressful. It's a little annoying when they reject your check-ins because you did one small thing wrong or you left like a, a water bottle on your desk but uh, don't stress out too much just stay focused and keep your focus on the CKA. So specifics related to the new remote desktop environment it is an XFCE desktop with Firefox as the default browser and again with any remote desktop uh, you can expect a little bit of lag but after the first couple minutes I found my lag to be bearable. Because the entire test environment is in a remote desktop you can have multiple terminals multiple browsers so as many tabs as you'd like as many browsers as you'd like this kind of eliminates the need for things like tmux if you don't already know it 
it. So in my case, I had one terminal open to do my work. I had one terminal to just take notes in Vim. And then on my browser, I had one tab open with the Kubernetes base docs. And then I had one tab open with the complete one pager API reference, which I'll talk about later. Last little note here, if you use a different keyboard layout, like I used Dvorak over QWERTY, uh, don't worry, all that stuff gets transferred over just fine. Now you might think it's a little silly to talk about copy paste, but if you've ever worked in a remote desktop environment, you know that copy pasting can be a little bit wonky at times. So here are a couple tips. You can copy and paste with the right click menu. So right click, copy, right click, paste works fine. You can also use control shift C and V within the remote desktop to copy and paste. And then the instructions, let me scroll up. On the left side, there's a copy button on the uh, the kube config switching and also copy buttons on any important piece of text. So use those one click copy buttons. It'll save you from typos and keep you in the right context so you're interacting with the correct clusters. Small note here, if you copy from Firefox and paste into Vim, it'll trigger a warning saying this is an unsafe paste. Uh, you can just click OK. One weird thing I noticed was when I copy pasted from Firefox into Vim, it would skip the first character. For example, with a YAML manifest, typically the first line is API version. It would just skip the A and I would have PI version and I have to fix that typo. So keep an eye out for that. Not sure if it'll happen to you, but if it does, it's good to know. In the XFCE terminal, some things are already set up for you, which are kind of nice. Coop cuddles are pre-configured with auto completion and alias decay, so you don't need to worry about that. Some guides, including the killer.sh, tell you to memorize a couple Vim options, such as shift with two, expand tab true, and tab stop two. You don't need to, these are preset in the terminal. If for some reason you don't like Vim, VS Code and WebStorm are available. I didn't use them, but you can click the link to find out more. And I kind of mentioned this before, TMX is available, but you don't need it if you don't know it because you can just open multiple terminals in the desktop anyways. Finally, some miscellaneous recommendations. Just use the biggest possible screen you can. It'll make everything more comfortable and, you know, having more comfort on the exam will probably probably have you do better on the exam itself. Um, one thing is the PSI browser has this big top bar and there's a double arrow pointing upwards on the right side. On my screen, it was red. Click that. It'll like collapse the top bar a bit, giving you a little bit more real estate to work with the questions and the remote environment. And that is it for the testing environment. So this is the last section of the guide, the finesse part, where I just teach you some functions, some aliases, ways of really speeding up your game because according to this mindset bullet point, time is your most valuable resource and speed is your best friend. So the faster you work, the more time you'll have at the end to review questions or just go over things that were difficult. And one of the key things to understand to move fast on the exam is to be imperative first and declarative second. I know with Kubernetes, we tend to prefer crafting meticulous YAML manifests by hand and applying them. But on the exam, you want to prefer for creating things with kubectl create or run over the typical kubectl apply. There are some times where you'll still have to use apply, but you want to start with kubectl create or run to generate those templates if you can. So now that I told you how important kubectl create and kubectl run are, let me just go into those commands a little bit more. Copying from YAML is a last resort. If there's a resource that you can create using kubectl create or kubectl run, you want to prefer that first. If you need to expand and do something further from create or run, you can use the dash dash dry run equals client output YAML and then pipe the output to a file to have a template to work from. I've gone ahead and hopped on over to the terminal to show you what I mean. So take for example, the CKA says to create a pod with two containers, one busy box and one nginx. We know to create a pod, we gotta do kubectl run and we'll call it double for two pods. And we have to start with an image. I'll go ahead and start with busy box, but in order to add the second container with the nginx image, I'm gonna have to use this as a template. So in order to do that, we do dry run on the client side and then output YAML to get a template. And then from there, we can use that template as a base to add whatever we need. So in our case, we want to add another container, one for uh, Nginx. Do the same thing here. And then once your template, and then once you've made edits to your templates, just like that, you can do a kubectl apply from a file. And just like that, you got your pod. So now that I've shown you how easy it is to generate YAML templates from the kubectl run command, you can also do the same thing with create. It's important to know exactly what you can create imperatively with the commands. You might be tempted to memorize it. I did not A really good way of checking what exactly you can or can't do is using the dash H option. So if I wanted to know what I could create with kubectl create, I'm gonna make this smaller because kubectl outputs are gigantic. Uh, It'll tell you exactly what available commands there are to create resources. So everything here can be created using kubectl create. So you want to prioritize using this over a YAML template from the docs. Now it might be hard to memorize exactly what options need to be passed to every single resource type. So again, the dash H option comes in handy as it gets more and more detailed with your command. For example, if I wanted to create a deployment, I could do create deploy, but I forget exactly what needs to go into a deployment. 
I can use the dash H option. It gives you a couple examples as well as all the options available in the command. So become best friends with KubeCuddle Run and KubeCuddle Create because it'll help you so much on the exam. You also want to make sure you have an absolutely solid understanding of the Kubernetes documentation, its structure, and make sure to kind of mentally bookmark places you think you might need to come back to later. For example, I know that KubeCuddle Create does not allow me to create something like a network policy. So if I just search it, uh, I happen to know that there's a really good template near the top right here. In addition to that, I have a small trick to help you find example manifests for things you need. So if you're looking for a persistent volume YAML manifest, you can do control F and then type in specifically K I N D colon space and the type of resource you want. And that'll pretty much jump you straight to an example that you need. So if I did kind persistent volume, uh, persistent volume claim also happens to match, but it'll help you find resources pretty quickly. Cool. I kind of hinted at this part before, but Kubernetes API has a one pager reference. So if there's any option or key that you need more details on, this is a great place to look instead of just scouring the documentation, hoping you find the right key. So take, for example, you need to find out what exactly goes into a pod spec. You can click on pod v1 core, pod spec, and then every single key with description of its behavior is right here. So again, if you need something specific in the API, the one pager API reference is really good. You can find the one pager API reference by clicking this top level reference button. And then this link to the one page API reference will give you exactly what you're looking for. And in the spirit of saving time, you wanna make sure that you use short names and type less. For example, CM is the same thing as config map, STS is stateful set, deploy, deployment, PVC, persistent volume claim. You should try to remember the more common ones, but if you ever forget them, you can use the K API resources command to view them all. Apologies if this is a little small, but the resources that have short names we'll have those short names listed in the second column of K API resources. Now, last thing on this guide, I'm going to be going over some aliases, functions, variables, things that'll help you just be faster on the exam. So remember that dry run client output YAML thing that we're probably going to be typing a lot. We can put that in a variable. DO stands for dry output. So if you set the DO variable, the do variable to the dry run client output YAML string, instead of typing it out every single time, you can do something like kubectl run nginx image nginx insert the dry output variable and just like that you have your yaml template next we got a function called mkcd which makes a directory and then cds into it this is useful for organizing your yaml manifests by question it's pretty easy to memorize mkcd is a function that makes a directory and then cds into that directory so if you happen to know that question 16 requires you to write a couple manifests mkcd question 16 and then you can create your uh, manifest from there yeah and because there are just so many questions and so many different clusters it really helps to stay organized by questions so mkcd will save you a little bit of time if you choose to remember it of course you can always just make the directory and then cd into it manually i just prefer to do it faster with mkcd so that's it for the must-haves that i would recommend everyone to remember next i have a couple nice tabs at the bottom k apply f is something that i typed a lot of so i alias that to k a f calf and then could have here is very similar it's just the destroy operation of the file so a really efficient way of working in my opinion is to start Start with your template from kubectl run or create using the dry output variable to create your template. Then from there, make your edits, then use KAF to apply your YAML manifest to the cluster. Now, if you're familiar with Kubernetes tools, you might know that there's a tool called kubectx and kubeNS. You don't have these tools on the exam, nor is it probably worth the time to set it up. So a kind of quick and dirty way of doing it was I would export a variable NK, um, which just targets the kube system namespace, kube system namespace. So if I want to do K get pods, but I didn't want to type in namespace kube tab system tab like this i could do a k get pod and then mk just like that same result similarly i just use the n variable to target whatever important namespace was in the question so i could type less as well again completely optional and up to you now the last thing that i'll share is how to delete pods quickly you can use grace period zero with force to terminate pods immediately if you don't want to sit around waiting for pods to delete before you can create new things you really wouldn't want to do this anywhere else but the exam, but because you want to move fast, this might be helpful for you. All right, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. If you have any more questions about the exam, just drop in the comments, I'll reply. But if you do every single thing in this guide, I have no doubt that you can pass the CKA. Now, before I go, I do have one small request. I haven't been uploading as much as I would have liked to, which happens, but if there's anything that you would like to see, anything that interests you, um, please drop it in the comments. I would love to build the direction of this channel together. With that said, good luck, have fun, and let us know how you did. Yeah.